Hi, this is Amy from Jersey Family Fun, and I'm here with Lori Berkner, the queen of children's music, to talk about our upcoming album, Lori Berkner Lullabies. Thanks for joining us today, Lori. Thanks for having me. Um, so let's talk about your album. People have been asking for this uh, for a lullaby album for a really long time. Um, what made you decide now is the time to do the lullaby album? Um, mostly it was because I felt like I started to realize I had written a bunch of lullabies for my daughter over the years and um, I also felt like I had enough of a body of work of really up and fun dancing around kinds of songs and that it felt like it would be a good time to put together songs that were more for quiet and going to sleep and and also because I really you know I've had some really special many, many, many special moments over the years putting Lucy to bed and I realized how important it was to have music at that time, whether I was singing it or whether she was listening to it um, herself as she was going to sleep and I really loved the idea of creating something like that myself for other people to use. That's awesome. I know that the bedtime routine is really special for us too, like making up, so I'm not a musician but I make up songs too for my kids. Um, yay. yay. So it's just a really special time. So we're really looking forward to the Lullaby album. Um, we play YouTube videos through our like Twilight Turtle that we have. So they hear some of your songs that they're already part of the bedtime routine. So they're really excited to have the Lullaby album. Um, we just started doing Pillow Land, which is one of the new ones on your... It's You recorded it before, but it's on the album, the Lullaby album. Yeah, it is. And my son, we were talking about my son earlier, he knows all the words, like the first time he heard it, and now he sings it, and he wants to repeat it and play it over and over, so we're really oh, excited. Um, so you used Kickstarter to make the Lullaby album, um, so let's talk a little bit about the Kickstarter campaign, um, and why did you decide that Kickstarter was a good platform to use to make, to put the album together? Um... Well, I wanted to be able to make sure that I was reaching out to people while I was doing the album, while I was making it, and it seemed like a really good way to get people involved rather than just kind of posting things on Facebook. Um, and also, I find when I make albums, it can be a very, um, it's not a solitary process, but it definitely can be kind of separate from the people that I make the music for because I find I'm writing songs sort of exploring them maybe with a couple of kids but a lot of times it's myself and the other musicians and the person who's recording me and we're the ones sort of listening and choosing and um, I thought it would be really neat to actually be talking to people who would be listening to this album along the way as I was actually making it because I feel like it's it wasn't just an album of songs that I was making because I wanted to write those songs or I was having fun with them it was something something that I'm hoping people will use you know, every night in their bedtime routine to become a really big part of their childhood and lives. And so I felt like this time, let me try something where I'm actually sharing what I'm doing along the way, where I'm getting feedback from the people who are going to be purchasing this album um, and see what that feels like. And I have to say, it was actually like a hundred times better than I even thought it was going to be because... Um, I don't know, I, I think I was almost a little nervous about it because I was very used to just kind of doing things on my own and then putting it out and waiting to see what people thought. And um, and I really got a lot of great feedback when I would share a song on a video update in the Kickstarter campaign for the people who donated, I would actually make a video every week of what was going on in the studio or what I was doing writing and try to share some of the songs. And I was nervous every single time that I would put a brand new song on there then when I would get feedback that people really enjoyed it or liked it, it's like it made the song real for the first time. And often that wouldn't happen until I put the whole album out. So, um, you know, there was something very encouraging and special about that. And it really felt like, oh, I'm doing this within a community. And the people who listen to my music are a community of people that I'm a big part of that I don't always get to have so much interaction with. So it turned out to be a really positive thing for me. For me, I hope it was good for them too. <laughs> it was really awesome. I was um, part of it, so I got to watch 
the oh, video okay. journals every week and see. I didn't watch them one time, but I went back and looked at a lot of them. And it was just awesome to see. And it, you didn't seem nervous at all. It seemed just like natural and and just really cool that of how everything was coming together and people were submitting their like their wubbies, talk about their nighttime routines. And oh, yeah. it was just really neat to see everything come together along the way. Um, so how many songs on the album are brand new that you wrote just for the album? You have some brand new songs, some traditional lullabies, and some that you've recorded before, right? Right. I'm, uh, I don't remember exactly the numbers, but um, I think there are four traditional songs, and there are 21 songs in the album, and the other, um, so the other, what does that mean, 17, those are split about um, half new ones and half old ones. I don't remember if there's a little more left of one or the other. Okay. Um, and there's some special things on the album, too. You had your daughter come on and help you out with the riddle song, right? Yeah, yeah. That was so great. I, I wasn't sure if she would want to do it. I also wasn't sure how we would sound together. So um, the fact that she actually wanted to do it, she was excited about it. And then when we did it, I thought it just came out so sweet and beautiful. Um, it was a really wonderful surprise for me. Awesome. I can't wait to hear the final version on the album. Okay, so for the people that weren't part of the Kickstarter campaign, what are the steps in making the album, and what part of the process are you at right now with the album? Um, well, I think the way we broke it down, essentially, you know, lots of people do things differently, but I started by writing and choosing songs that I wanted to record. Um, and then I brought those songs to the band and we would rehearse them or I would work on songs that I was doing on my own separately. And, um, and part of that is sort of recording early versions of them and kind of getting a feel for what the arrangement would be. And then I bring them into the studio and I start by putting down a basic track where I sing and, well, first I play guitar and then I sing to it and we put them together. And then I add on whatever else we're going to add on, other musicians, myself singing more background vocals or maybe playing another instrument. Um, and then we take all of those recordings, they're each um, separate, and we put them together. That's called mixing. And we mix it all together to make it hopefully sound really good. And, um, and then it gets mastered, which is when you kind of Make sure that all the songs sound at about the same level so that you don't end up turning on the album and it gets really loud at one part or so quiet in another that you can't hear it. Um, and, and in the meantime, we had to work on artwork to create the, the cover and what that would look like, which was really fun because some people submitted some stars that kids had made that are all on the cover. So we have um, artwork from kids who are part of the campaign. Very cool. And, and then... Um, so that sort of gets done at the same time towards the, as the whole thing's going on. And in the end, we have the artwork done and we send it in to be printed along with the music, which also gets printed on CDs and gets prepared to be able to be downloaded. And right now, basically waiting, <laughs> waiting for it all to be done. And that's, that's like a few months in there where everything has to be finished. Get hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And then you wait. And so that's what I'm doing waiting um and so the album will be released april 8th right april 8th yeah 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 so not too far. no not too much longer to wait um so looking back now that the process is over almost over what was your favorite part of making putting everything together um hmm. you know i really like <clears throat> excuse me i really like mixing I think that's my favorite part of being in the studio is I, sometimes doing the actual singing and the playing can be really fun, but also sometimes I have to do it over and over and over again to get it just the way I want it. So um, when I'm mixing, I already have the pieces. I, I know I've done things in a way that I like. And then it's like, it's a little both like putting a puzzle together and also like sculpting something to me. It's, it's like creating a piece of a work of art in that moment is, oh, let's have a horn come in at this part. Oh, I think my voice should be a little quieter there. Oh, let's use, when I played the guitar that way, that sounded a little nicer to me, and let's put those things together. Let's add the piano here. And all of that, um, like sculpting this piece of 
sound, you know, that, that to me creates a picture when I listen to it and makes me feel a certain way when I listen to it. And I try very hard to, you know, pay attention to what feelings come up when I'm listening to what I'm making. And I'm hoping that the feelings I have, like maybe feeling very, like someone's hugging me or feeling um, uh, excited or sleepy <laughs> or whatever it is that those things come across in the music. So I, I really, I really enjoy that part. And, um, kind of forget sometimes when I don't do it for a while. So that was really fun to go back and realize. And not, sorry to be a little long-winded, but I also <laughs> really loved when Lucy came in and sang with me. That was great too. Yeah, that's so special. Like it, it just felt really special to watch. Like I could tell um, in your video journals just like how special the whole lullaby thing was to you personally and I could see how why it would take a long time to put out a lullaby album because it's just such a meaningful personal thing lullabies singing them yeah. to your kids and so thank you for sharing that whole thing with all of us because it's just awesome and I'm really excited for the album to listen to with my kids um so the fun's not quite over. You're going to launch the album with a concert in Morristown, New Jersey on April yeah. 5th. Um, so how do you get ready for a show and keep up your energy level like before a show? What do you do to get ready? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it's so funny. I actually think about that a lot. I mean, I, I, I do a lot of things. I vocalize. I try to do that as much as possible, work on my sound, rehearse with my with the band, um, actually even just exercising and making sure that I'm moving and eating well and I'm sleeping enough and all those things are really important. Otherwise, I could get sick on the day of the concert, which has happened and it's really hard to put on a show that way. Um, and, and I just also really want to be very present and enjoy what I'm doing. So, um, and on the other hand, there's sort of working on and learning the songs together so that they can be performed. So especially if they're new ones. Um, and for this show, it's going to be the first time that I'll be trying to work in these more gentler, gentler songs. So I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see how it works out. I have a couple of ideas, but um, I'm not even really sure how we're going to do it yet. That's all still in the work. Oh, very cool. I'm excited to see how it comes out. We'll be there. So check it out. Great. So. Oh, great. Very excited. Okay, so we asked our readers and our writer's kids to submit some video questions for Lori, and we're going to go do them now. Um, the first is a question from Aiden. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Yeah. What is my favorite flavor of ice cream? Yes. Um, I would have to say, especially because I live in New York, it's Ben and Jerry's New York Super Fudge Chunk, which has all kinds of white chocolate and dark chocolate and nuts, and I forget it has like everything. And it's chocolate ice cream. Awesome. <laughs> Sounds yummy. Okay, and the next question we have is from Ayla. Hi, Lori. I have a question. Like you how we had um a cow. What is on my head? Hmm. Sometimes I wear a cow on my head. Sometimes I wear a pig. <laughs> <laughs> right now I have a pig, but I love cows. Moo. <laughs> okay. Um. Our next question is from Ella Rose. It's Ella Rose, and I would like. No. What dinosaur are you like? Bye. Bye. Um, I think my favorite dinosaur is a stegosaurus. And I don't even really know why. I think I just, I like the name and I like the big bumps on their back. The next question is from Griffin. What's your favorite flavor of pasta? What's your favorite flavor of a popsicle? I think I would have to say cherry. Cherry. Awesome. This is and fruity and all the red ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Okay, the next question is um, from Joey. Hi, Joey. I'm going to get you back on Taylor Mac. What, what's your superhero name? Oh my gosh, what's my superhero name? Um, if I said to make something up, I would say, uh, Super Singer Mama. And I sing whenever fun needs to be had. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, okay, so then the next question is from Lennon. Lori Birkenar, I have two questions for you. One, where, where did you learn the songs? Two, which instruments do you play the side, besides the guitar and the drums? So, where did I learn my songs? I, I actually, well, I didn't exactly learn them. I just made them up. Um, and the older songs, I learned them from kids and grown-ups and listening to CDs and, and in books of music. But most of the songs, I just make them up myself. And um, the other question was, what do I, what other instruments do I play besides the guitar and drum? Um, I wish I played the drums. I see them a little tiny bit. <laughs> My daughter actually plays the drums a lot better than I do. That's always something I really wanted to learn more about. Um, although I did, I have taken a few drum lessons. And I also used to play, I don't play these so much anymore, but um, I know how to play the piano and the violin. And there's another instrument called the clarinet, which is kind of like a big recorder with, um, with some more holes in it, and I actually did play recorder before the clarinet, so I think those are pretty much all my instruments. And my, this one, la la la. That's the best one, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I like the one that comes from me, that's a good one. And then the next question is from Logan. I'm Logan, I am nine years old, and what is the funniest thing that happened to you on tour? That was what's the funniest thing that ever happened to me on tour? Yes. Right? Yep. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been playing for many, many years, so there's a lot of stuff, but the first thing that comes to mind was that, you know, sometimes when I'm singing a song called We Are the Dinosaurs, I do find myself falling asleep. I don't know if you've ever noticed that. <laughs> but one time when that happened on stage, um, usually the other band members will wake me up and then maybe the whole audience will help out. But one time I had my eyes closed and I was, you know, I don't know if I was exactly asleep, but I definitely didn't know what was happening on stage. And apparently a kid came up on stage and was trying to wake me up. <laughs> <laughs> and she was poking at me and people were yelling and trying to get her off the stage and someone actually had to finally come and pick her up and hand her to her mom who couldn't get close enough to the stage to come and get her down. Somehow she had like made herself her way up and <laughs> and I thought it was one of the my bandmates. <laughs> I found out no, it was just a probably two or three year old girl who had come up. So that worked. She got me up. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> so you actually were sort of asleep? Well, I definitely, I mean, when I'm lying there with my eyes closed, I don't really know what's going on around me. <laughs> they have done crazy things to me. Like, Susie has thrown, like, parts of the set at me if they're light and pillow-like, you know, to, like, she, like, bonks me with a big blow-up candy cane sometimes. Or um, Rady once, like, brought cookies from backstage and waved them under my nose <laughs> and things like that. I don't... I, I don't always know what they're going to do when I'm lying there because, you know, I, I like to fall asleep during that part. That's so funny. I didn't actually think of you actually closing your eyes. Like, I don't know why I didn't think that you were actually up there with your eyes closed. Oh, yeah, they're closed. <laughs> they're <laughs> totally closed. And the thing is that I, it's 
funny time. I feel very vulnerable, actually, because those guys could do whatever they want. And there have been a lot of times when I've done much smaller things where I lie down in the midst of kids, and kids come up, and they just, like, shake me, and they pull out of my hair. And, like, one time, Susie actually, I think, sprayed some water on me, even. Wow. <laughs> so it's like you're back in the preschool, like, class, like, teaching the kids. You're, like, right in the center. Totally, totally. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so the next question is from Nilsa. Hi, Lori. My name is Nilsa. Your songs sound beautiful. Where did you learn to sing? You know, mostly I, learning was just by doing it. I loved singing from when I was pretty little. I actually remember, I remember really specifically different times, like when I knew and jumping around and singing and loving it, and then Again, when I started singing at school with other kids when I was seven um, in chorus and things like that, that were, just made me realize how much I love to do it. So I would do it all the time. And I think the more that anybody does anything, the more practice you get with it. Now, actually, as a grown-up, I do take voice lessons, but I didn't really do that until um, probably in my late 20s or early 30s. So, so you know, learning, learning for me was doing. Cool. Do you have any advice for kids that might want to be a musician when they grow up? Just practice or anything? Yeah, well, I think a couple things. One is the more the more you do it, the better you get at it. And I think um, not being afraid to do things that maybe don't sound good to you right away. Like one thing that I know is very hard was for me, and I can see this in my own daughter and in lots of kids, is when you hear yourself singing on a recording the very first time, or even the tenth or the hundredth time, even sometimes for me still I have a hard time hearing myself recorded, because it sounds different than in my head. But um, just remember that to other people it sounds natural and beautiful, and the more that you do it, the better it can be, and the more you will feel confident about it, probably. Um, so yeah, I just say go for it, just enjoy and like let yourself have fun and that's really what that's really what why I started doing it because it was fun for me and I don't think I would keep doing it if it wasn't fun anymore. so I don't know if that answers your question yeah it does it does um it it just looks like you're having so much fun and like everything's so natural and you're just having a great time doing what you love um well so awesome. I do actually have to rehearse and practice and think about a lot of things but I think by the time I get to the point where I'm singing for people and playing, I've spent enough time working on it and and sung enough times songs with kids that I really do enjoy it. And having the kids around is part of what changes everything and makes it that much more fun because I see people who come to my shows and adults too enjoying themselves and then that makes me feel really good. So then I start to enjoy myself more and it's just a big circle, you know, so, um, so I feel really lucky that being able to sing can actually start that circle happening. Awesome. Um, I also wanted to say mahalo for all of your music, because it actually really did um, save me from a lot of crazy afternoon, like that witching hour meltdown time with the kids, and then you like put on Lori Berkner, and you're like flopping around on the floor like a fish, like riding a bike, acting out all the stuff like we saw in your concert. And it's just like really fun and easy to connect with your kids that way. Like sometimes it's hard to know how to play with your kids sometimes when since you're grown up and like out of the kid thing. And then, you know, you're there with your kids and like the music just helps you to connect with them. So mahalo for that. And that's also one of the songs on your album coming up. We'll go back to the lullaby album. Um, it's thank it means thank you in Hawaii. And it's one of the songs on your lullaby album. So why did you put that? Is there a reason why that one made it to the album? Um, well, one of the re things is that I asked people who were part of the campaign what songs that they might like to hear made into lullabies. And that was one of the ones that was chosen. And I think I also, I was feeling very grateful a lot while I was making it, grateful for the support I was getting. You know, the financial support, the emotional support, the feedback from everybody who was interested in being part of it and sharing all of that with me. So it felt 
like the right song to put on. And actually, it's the only song on the album where one of the families who donated to the Kickstarter campaign had their daughter come in uh, to the studio with me, and that was the song that we had her sing on. I guess actually we ended up having to go on one on on one other song just for fun, um, but it wasn't planned. I wanted it to be on the one that said thank you. So um, just kind of to relate that message to everybody. That's awesome. I'm really excited to hear it um, when it comes out. So I'll be getting mine a little bit early because I was part of the Kickstarter campaign. Everyone <laughs> else, you're missing out. You have to wait till April 8th. <laughs> Or you can go to Lori's concert at the Mayo Performing Arts Center in Morristown, New Jersey on April 5th. The show's at 1.30, and there's different levels of tickets you can purchase. Um, one is the VIP experience where you can meet Lori and get tickets, preferred tickets in the front row, which is a really cool, awesome experience. Uh, you should definitely meet Lori at some point in your life. Um, so thanks for being here today with us, Lori, um, and for talking to us about your album. Thank you so much. It was really fun. How, 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 fireflies dance and fireflies glow in the night, in the night, in the night. Round and round without a sound, they're making a lantern of light. Each one flashes silently like tiny little stars beaming bright. Fireflies dance and fireflies glow in the night, in the night, in the night. Ha'u, ha'u. Ha-oo, ha-oo. Fireflies dance and fireflies glow in the night, in the night, in the night. Felix lands on my left hand and Frida lands on my right. First he blinks and then she winks, then they fly through the sky out of sight. Fireflies dance and fireflies glow in the night, in the night, in the night. In the night, in the night, in the night, in the night. Good night, in the night.